Rookie wide receiver Quentin Johnston is a long shot to be Offensive Rookie of the Year, but on today's show, we're going to talk about what it would take from him to get it done and also the impact it would have on the Chargers offense. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. We've been covering the Chargers together now for seven seasons, but this is our fifth season as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making this your first listen. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or listen wherever you get your podcast. David, what are we getting into today? On today's show, we are going to take a look at what it would take for each one of the Chargers' top three picks in this draft to win their Rookie of the Year, offensive or defensive, and what that would look like in the short term and the long term for the Chargers team. Yeah, if any one of these players were to blow up and win their respective Rookie of the Year war, I mean, it would not only make the Chargers' chances of going deep this year much better, but also build, you know, really set them up for the future as well. And it starts with Quentin Johnston, and it started with a Fan Mail Friday show that we actually got that was made for the mailbag on this week's show from Boltergeist. We didn't have enough space in the other show to put this in, but Boltergeist asked us, if you could have one player break out and win offense or defensive rookie of the year, who would it be and why? Not who could win it, but who would make the biggest impact on the team winning that award? And so today we're going to break down the impact for each of the Chargers' three picks. And David, it would take certain things for each one of them, right? They're all long shots for different reasons. Quentin Johnson, though, is the most likely one to win the award. According to FanDuel, he has the eighth best odds, but he's still plus 2,800. So some dominoes would absolutely have to fall into place for him to get a chance to put up the numbers necessary to win that award. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest reasons uh, why that they are like that is the amount of quarterbacks that got taken before Quentin Johnston went off the board. And it's not even just the quarterbacks, but there's a couple of wide receivers that are also above him and have better odds than him. But that's, I mean, that's that's one of the big things for him. He's going to have to have an incredible season, and he's going to have to ha- hope that one of these top quarterbacks that got drafted didn't go off and have a great season themselves, or else it's almost a lock that a quarterback quarterback's going to win the award historically quarterbacks do win the award but the last two seasons it's been a wide receiver in both years right it was yeah. Garrett Wilson last year and then we before that it was Jamar Chase who had a ridiculous season and it yeah. but I mean it's not just one of those quarterbacks having a bad year right like you can't have any of those quarterbacks have a you know close to Justin Herbert like rookie season and we right. haven't seen pretty much anyone do that recently right it's been very middling as far as that's right the rookie quarterbacks and you know, it's not like they're going up against Caleb Williams, right, this year. So there's a not chance yet. that the rookies <laughs> don't do well enough at quarterback, especially given the situations, right? The Texans yeah. with Bryce Young, like, okay, that's nice. It's still the Texans. We have a lot right. of things to figure out. It's still the Panthers Definitely. with, you know, CJ. And a Stroud. lot of additions, too. Like, a lot of additions. Yeah, most, I mean, that's the thing about getting taken that highly, right? You're getting taken by teams who are finishing with the worst records last right. year. Right, they're rebuilding, right? Yeah, and I do think, David, it, for Quentin Johnston, the reason you think it could happen is because of the missed time you've had from Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. And even though, yes, those guys could stay healthy and he could still theoretically be better than both of them, right? Or put up 1,100, 1,200 yards potentially and still get it. But most likely scenario is those guys missing games, right? Keenan Allen missed seven last year. Mike Williams missed four and is coming from a back fracture from that last game of the season. Yeah. That's the most likely way. It would be one of those guys missing, you know, probably at least five or six games where he could come in and step into a bigger role. As we see it now, we think he's going to win wide receiver three, which is going to come with its own, you know, amount of snaps and things. But to yeah. get that target share on this offense, he could do it without injuries to the receivers. But that's honestly probably his best route. It, it definitely is his best route. I mean, it, you, you look at it, there's a lot of mouths to feed on this Chargers offense. I mean, you got a lot of very, very explosive very dangerous weapons. You got Austin Eckler. He's going to demand some target share. You got Gerald Everett. You're going to want to get the football to an open space and see what he can do for you. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, obviously they're going to demand their attention. They're going to get their catches. That's just going to happen. So for Quentin Johnston, you got to look at some of the snaps that are going to be kind of freed up or available to you. 
It's, uh, you know, DeAndre Carter had 65 targets. Michael Bandy had 21 targets. Uh, Sony Michelle even had 13 targets. And Trey McKitty had 18 well, targets. Well, Josh Palmer, too, right? Because it's yeah. like he would have to be taking some of those Josh Palmer snaps as well. Yeah, right. And, and Josh Palmer had up. over 75 targets l last season. So there, uh, there is plenty of snaps there to be had. But for Quentin Johnston to be able to, ha to, be able to have the opportunity to put up the type of, type of stat line that it's going to require to be able to win this award someone of those main two probably are going to have to be injured for that opportunity to present itself to quentin johnson yeah like he could have a really good year with those guys on the field but like it yeah. have a rookie of the year number type of numbers i should say yeah. it would take a really special year it'd be hard to imagine with those guys on the field and i think the other thing too is hey this would require instant chemistry with justin herbert that relationship has to get off to a quick Definitely. start and also fixing the drop issues right but like when you're talking about what that season looks like, Garrett Wilson last year, 83 catches, 1,103 yards, four touchdowns, right? That's pretty good. Jamar Chase, though, 81 catches, 1,455 yards, and 13 touchdowns. So Whew. that kind of shows you the variance in what happening around them really makes a difference because Justin Jefferson yeah. also had 88 catches for 1,400 yards and seven touchdowns and didn't win the rookie of the year, his rookie season, because there was another guy named Justin Herbert, right? If two positions have a great season it's going to go to the quarterback in those situations but you know how many receivers have ever had 1400 yards for the chargers one lance allworth one time then he never did it again keenan allen got to 1393 in 2017 that's the closest so david what is the line that you have him winning the rookie of the year award with yeah, so just considering the competition and, and you know the the talent at the wide receiver position, the running back position, you have to kind of put that into account Robinson, as well with yeah, Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs. Like those are guys that are probably you know going to be gunning have for this better award. Odds. Yeah, and then yeah, they have better odds at winning it. So I think you know it's going to have to be a pretty impressive stat line. So I, I think I'm looking at 75 catches. 1250 yards and, and somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 touchdowns, I think is what it's going to have to take in order to be in the conversation to, to get that done. Yeah, I had it very similar. I had 78 catches, 1250 yards, nine touchdowns, right? So that's very similar. And I mean, is a better season than Garrett Wilson, but not quite as good as Jamar Chase. And we'll right. see what happened around it. But David, I think short and long term, if he does go off, right, that means some things. If he goes yeah. and turns into a wide receiver one, in year one that gives the chargers some options down the road and sets them up not only this year right but next year as well yeah i mean in the short term you have an immediate weapon that, that's dangerous that that gets uh you know get to introduce himself to the nfl under the tutelage of Kellen moore and you know you, you get to to build that relationship and that chemistry and you get to grow with the young superstar quarterback like justin herbert and also it gives you some flexibility because you have two very high high paid high priced high cap number wide receivers that are on the books and if you have a guy that comes in right away and is able to put up that kind of stat line that makes it a lot easier to be able to say goodbye to one of these guys when inevitably you're gonna have to keenan allen and mike williams combined for about 66 million dollars of cap hits in 2024 so it gives you immediate flexibility in the long term to potentially move on from one of those guys because the chargers I'm going to whisper this, and we'll talk about this on a different show because we're scared to our $60 million over the cap in 2024 as we see it right now. Some of those big contracts are probably going to have to go. This makes you feel a lot better about it because this you would have to get a guy you legitimately view as a wide receiver one. You yeah. get the heir apparent to Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. As those guys get older, you find not only a guy to play with Justin Herbert, but a guy who's going to play with Justin Herbert for the next five seasons or four. On a rookie contract. Month, yes. On a rookie contract. Getting a cheap contract at a premier position, what, probably the second highest paid position in the league. It's between that and edge rusher, right? Both of those positions you can get upwards you need of $30 it. million dollars now. So that is a premier position that if he goes off there, now you're getting that guy on a rookie contract, and that's insane. And you need it because your quarterback is about to get paid a gazillion dollars, and so they're going to yeah. have to hit on draft picks repeatedly throughout the next however many years of this contract and however many years Justin Herbert's going to be your quarterback, you're going to have to hit on draft picks. You're going to have to get guys that can be immediate contributors because you're going to have to do the, the, the hot wire acts trying to figure out how to fit everything in there with uh, that big contract that Justin Herbert's going to, going to get. Absolutely. And I think short term wise takes the chargers offense to the next level. I mean, there's an outside chance yes. this happens with, 
you know, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams being in the fold that to some extent, right? So I think helps take the Chargers offense to the next level, helps yeah. take Justin Herbert's game to the next level potentially if he gets a guy that can be a true wide receiver one, which right now I think Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, both very high-end wide receiver twos at this point in their careers. I think you can make that argument, right? Not necessarily in the top 10, but in between 10 and 20, I think is probably where you'd fit both of those guys in. If you get a top, genuine top 10 receiver, right, something like that, top 15 receiver out of Quentin Johnson, he shows that in year one. Imagine what that will do for you going forward. And you give, you know, Justin Herbert what guys like Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts and some of the other guys from his draft class, like Jalen Waddle, right, yeah. have already gotten with Tua. So I like it. I mean, I think it's easily the easiest chance of any Chargers player to win a Rookie of the Year honors this year. Yeah. But the next guy we're talking about, would be another huge, huge boost if he was to somehow click in year one, put up a crazy season. That is Tuli Tuli Pulotu, who would really pay huge dividends if he finds a way to go off and as a rookie. But we're going to talk about him after this. First, I need to tell you guys about the best protein bar on the planet. And of course, I'm talking about Bill Bar. Bill Bar are my P-B-O-T-Y, my protein bar of the year, because they're the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And you're not going to find the blend of something that tastes great and is also healthy for you out there in the wild very often. Because that's the great thing, is you're getting something that tastes like a candy bar. It's 100% covered in chocolate and soft and easy to chew, while you're also getting flavors like cinnamon churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond, so many good flavors, so many good ways to break up the monotony of your diet. And most bars have only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Ditch the waxy, chalky, protein bars we've all had them we've all thrown them away halfway through get something that's not only going to taste great but it's pretty filling and honestly gives you great flavors you're not going to get very often you can even find them now at your local walmart you can go and pick up a four bar box there of double chocolate or cookies and cream or you can go to a sam's club and get a 13 bar box but since you listen to this show if you want to go to builtbar.com you can still save if you go there and use the promo code locked on 15 you can get 15 percent off your next order David, we talked about the most likely charger to win a Rookie of the Year award, and now we're going to talk about someone who would be a lot less likely, and a lot of it comes down to opportunity. Because even with Quentin Johnson, we know that he could find some opportunity right away, but it would be very hard for him to surpass Mike Williams and Keenan Allen with what they've already yeah. done for this team if both those guys are healthy. Right. Same kind of similar situation with Thule Tuipelotu, who... We like a lot, right? We like, especially for where the Chargers drafted him, how quickly kind of the edge depth disappeared in the draft. We like him. But right now, he's a plus $8,000 favorite to win for defensive rookie of the year. So that's way down there, right? That's yeah. 8,001 or 801. That's, according to FanDuel, not very likely. And I think that's because, David, it would absolutely take an injury to one of the Chargers' two-star pass rushers for him to have enough snaps and to have enough pass rushing attempts to go and win in a world like this. Yeah, I mean, pa pass rushers, man, they're, they're players that need those reps. Like, they have to go out there and they got to keep, you know, kind of setting their pass rush moves up and they got to kind of, you know, get their game going against the tackles that they're going up against. Like, that's something that you have to build over time and that just takes repetition and it takes time on the football field. So it absolutely has to require an injury to either Joey or, Khal or Khalil Mack for him to have any of that opportunity to get the snaps that would be required to put up a m absolutely massive stat line that you're going to have to to be able to win the defensive rookie of the year award at the edge rusher position. Well, the thing is, David, I mean, Joey Bosa missed 12 games last season. Khalil Mack missed 10 games in 2021, but yes. played in every single game last year. So, right. like, it, it's not out of this out of the question. Not right, at all. That he, they could not miss time. All. It's probably likely that one of them will miss time. And I think that he could be a rotational guy that looks really good and makes you feel better about the future. But to win this specific award, he's going to have to get enough snaps to put up really, really good numbers. The good news is, is he's playing out of position that wins the award frequently. Probably the easiest position, the position looked at most years sure. as far as who is going to be the winner of that award, including Joey Bosa or even Sean Merriman in the past for the Chargers, both winning it as edge rushers. But the thing is for him is not only would he have to get on the field, he would have to outplay a lot of other guys who were going to be probably starting roles too. And then like the 13 other edge rushers that were taken ahead of him in this class, like Nolan Smith and yeah. Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson, all yeah. of these other edge rushers and, you know, the guys like Jalen Carter and just the other top defenders in this draft class. So that's what it would be, 
you know, makes it tough, obviously. But at the same time, four of the last seven winners have been edge rushers, and they've had to put up some really good sack seasons, but not even all double-digit sack seasons. I mean, there's some single-digit sack seasons kind of peppered in there. So it would have to put up a pretty, pretty good line. What did you have it as? Yeah, I mean, just looking at the last guy who won, which I, I'm I'm going to credit that to to Micah Parsons. I mean, I know he's a linebacker, but he was an edge rusher. Okay, I mean, yeah. he was coming after the quarterback. He, had he was a both as a rookie, line. but you yeah, know, seventy tackles, three forced fumbles, thirteen sacks, twenty tackles for loss, which actually tied the league lead, regardless of rookie or veteran. It did not matter, and also he was a first team All Pro and a pro bowler. So yeah. that was just an, an absolutely ridiculous year. So just considering that stat line and the competition he's going to be going up against, you know, he's going to have to have the opportunity, but I think it's in, in the neighborhood of 65 to 85 tackles, two forced fumbles, and I think it's going to take 12 sacks to be able to win that award. Yeah, I mean, I think you should have factored in the guys who won it at that position before him because he uh, playing linebacker, he's the only one that's ever getting close to that many tackles at edge rusher, right? I mean, yeah. Chase Young won it the year before him with 44 tackles, right? So you don't have to put up 80 tackles to win this award. He yeah. also only put up seven and a half sacks. Chase Young won the defensive that's player or rookie of the year with seven and a half sacks. Nick Bosa won it in 2019 with nine sacks, right? Mm -hmm. So you haven't even necessarily had to have double-digit sacks at edge rusher to win this award that's but interesting 20 tackles for us michael parsons 10 for chase young in 2020 yeah. 16 for nick bosa in 2019 and then joey bosa right 10 and a half sacks right just gets over that 10 41 yeah. tackles and 17 tackles for us so i think those other three guys give you more of the norm you yeah. know as far as michael parsons who is kind of a hybrid player just yeah so, so maybe somewhere you know nine to ten and so then i have like 11 sacks tackles for loss 14 or 43 tackles total 16 tackles for us not quite as many as joey but you know same amount as nick bosa if he's somewhere around that he's going to give himself a really really good chance and if that's he can do it you know and that would be <laughs> that's a crazy year right yeah. like that's saying really he has a year. better year at joey bosa but joey bosa you have to remember only played in 12 games that year so he missed four right. games and then 12 games had 10 and a half sacks which is insane right and he was just yeah. brilliant right off the bat and ended up yeah. playing 16 games the next season but if he were to do this, David, obviously a long shot. It's plus 8,000. But if this dude was to somehow turn into that kind of edge rusher in year one, it would give you a lot to feel good about, not only this year, but in the long term if, if, as far as the impact goes as well. Yeah, I mean, I think you look at the history of the Chargers taking edge rushers in the second round, it's been hit and it's been missed. I mean, I think that there's a couple of examples that you, you would you would point to and say, I mean, that, that, that was a pretty good player. I mean, like the one who got away to Seattle. I mean, that's probably a guy you probably would like to have right about now. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Yeah. But also you have your guys like Jer Jeremiah Tauchu that didn't really, you know, fit the, the billing here. But yeah, to have a second round pick, you, know, you bring in, you draft a guy at a position of need, of need, and he's able to work out for you. He's able to hold up and be adequate against the run, and he's able to you know put some premium sack numbers up there when you have two also very expensive, uh, older you know getting older type edge rushers. It would mean the world to have a a, a player at a position that gets paid just an unbelievable amount of money on a rookie cost controlled contract for five years or four years, excuse me, because he's a second round pick, that would be massive for, for the Chargers. And it would be great insurance because you know inevitably one of these guys is going to get hurt. And to have somebody that can step in and not see a giant, and I mean giant dip in production, would be just great news for the Chargers. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing short term wise. I mean, yeah, of course you could get a scenario, right? Maybe Joey Bosa misses 10 games and comes back and you have all three of them at the end of the season, sure. right? Maybe it boosts your defense that way. It's hard to imagine if one of those guys gets hurt, he's going to come in and outplay them. But obviously in this scenario, if he's winning defensive rookie of the year, he's going to be on par with at least or close to the production that those dudes are putting up out there, yeah. which is going to be incredibly hard to do, which is why yeah. it would be very cool if it did happen, obviously. Yeah. But it upgrades a pass rush unit that was really, really poor last year and did hit that cliff as soon as Joey Bosa exited the picture, right? Very clearly. And then he also has his Joey Bosa and Sean Merriman moment, right? Coming in, winning defensive rookie of the year as an edge rusher has been something the greats of the Chargers since 2000 have all done, right? It's kind of yeah. a rite of passage. If you're going to be the heir apparent, and that's the long-term view of it, right? Yeah. You potentially get your long-term replacement 
for one of these two guys and Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, who Joey Bosa, an old 28-year-old season coming up because of the injuries he's had. And Khalil Mack is 32 or going to be 32 or yeah, playing at his 32-year-old season. So yeah. I think having the flexibility to potentially move on from one of those guys next year where a couple more 30 plus million dollar cap hits are going to hit for the Chargers next year and they're 60 million over the cap. Him doing this makes you feel so much better about the problems you're going to face in 2024. You get the heir apparent to the pass rushing throne. And you also, David, get guess what? Another cheap contract, like you were saying, at a premium position, right? That's yeah. a premium position. Edge rusher, 100%. wide receiver. Look at what Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack are making, right? $30 and million Keenan dollars per Williams. season. Right. Yeah. And just like we talked about before, like, Good quarterbacks win Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's right. Most of the time. Good edge rushers are usually the one who win Defensive Rookie of the Year. If he can come in, put up double-digit sacks, he would throw himself in the ring. It would be a lot to ask of a 20-year-old. Of course. Of course. Yeah. That's what would make it so insane if it were to happen this year and like how be much awesome. better you'd be feeling about the nucleus of this defense going forward. And he would feel it just as good for someone who actually, according to FanDuel, is more likely to win Defensive Rookie of the Year than Tuli Tulu Pelotu, and that is Dayon Henley. And guess what? He doesn't necessarily need an injury to happen for him to get the opportunity to win this award because he could just beat Kenneth Murray out in training camp. So we're going to talk about that coming up right after this. All right, David, such a good question from Bolter, guys, and we appreciate you guys getting on the get, coming and watching today's show after contributing for all the fan shows, and we will be having a fan mail show probably on Friday again, too, so you guys can get your questions in there that every day is already know. And tomorrow, I struggle to say it, we should have an interview for you guys, a very special guest, but we won't count our chickens before they hatch, but that's what's on the show tomorrow. Every day, is, if you were paying attention last week, You'll probably know who it is. Hopefully, we'll have that coming for you guys tomorrow with some other good content. But I do want to get back to this, David, because one of the guys we wanted to talk about today was Dayon Henley, the Chargers' new middle linebacker who was taken in the third round a little bit of a surprise, right? And also another position that's harder to win this award. But we have seen some guys do it in the past. Even, yeah. you know, a few years ago at this point, he has plus 6,000 per fan duel to win the Defensive Rookie of the Year award. And I think one of the things that he has to do first is start right away. This is not a, a you know something where he can come in halfway through and win this award at this position. Not only does he have to start right away, David, if he's going to have this season, a lot of things have to fall into place, and he has to play pretty darn well. Oh, my goodness, does he ever. I mean, yes. I mean, first and foremost, this is a position uh, with this award in mind you absolutely have to be on the field from game one. And the reason yeah. why is because you look at the stat lines of the numbers of the middle linebackers that they put up that when they won this award, it's basically like this. 160 tackles, about six sacks, and two interceptions. That's pretty close to what Shaq Leonard had in 2018. In 2012, Luke Keekley also 160 tackles. I mean, it's going to take... An absolute monster of a season. Dayon Henley is going to have to be a, an absolute machine. He's going to have to just run people over all season long. And he's going to have to be pretty good in coverage as well. I mean, it, that's an aspect of it that they did pay attention to. Both of those players are very instinctual, very, very good in coverage as well. And it was a part of the reason why they won that Rookie of the Year award. Yeah, and I mean, I think when you're looking at what it would take for him internally with the Chargers, it looks like this, right? I mean, an injury to Eric Kendricks or Kenneth Murray yeah. gets him that starting spot, it seems like, right? It seems like yeah. if either of those guys goes down, he probably goes in and fills in for either one of them. Yeah, so that's his sure. quickest way on the field, but it doesn't necessarily take that, right? Like, he could win. If they're going to give him a chance at Kenneth Murray in Kenneth Murray's job, he yeah. would have a chance to, you know, potentially take that. I don't see And he should cold, have that right. He should have that he ability. He should. I mean, I don't think you have a right. You're a rookie. But, like, no, I, no, he I mean, like should the, have the chance. the chance to do it for sure. Yeah. I think that the thing is, though, is it's hard to imagine him totally supplanting him before the season starts. It seemed right. like it probably takes some bad play and seeing Kenneth Murray play bad. But seeing Kenneth Murray play bad hasn't necessarily always gotten the next guy a chance no, in years past bad. either. Not to drag on Kenneth Murray, but this is a, a day on Henley segment, right? So if he's yeah. going to win defensive rookie of the year, he has to have that job from year one. He has to mesh perfectly with Eric Hendricks. And he basically has to play like not only one of the best rookie defenders, but one of the best linebackers in the league, period. That's what it takes to win that award. You said it. Shaq Leonard, 163 tackles. Luke Keekley from Pro Football Reference. You can get different tackle numbers everywhere. Sure. But 
Luke Keekley, 164 tackles. Shaq Leonard, seven sacks. Luke Keekley, one. Both of them had 12 tackles for us. Both of them had two interceptions. So is that the line you gave before? Is that the line you think you would have to put up? Yeah, I mean, it's going to have... I mean, it has to be 150 plus tackles. I think you're looking in, in, you know, in between four and and six sacks, depending on your interception numbers. But I I think it's got to be that, and and it has to be at least two interceptions to be in the conversation. Like it's going to take a Herculean type of stat line to be able to be uh, the guy who wins that award at middle linebacker. Yeah, I have it at 150 tackles, which is less than those other guys, right? And there's more games now than when those guys won those awards because that's 2018, 2012. I haven't 150 tackles, but I haven't been making up for it this way. Five sacks, 12 tackles for us, five interceptions. So five interceptions, five sacks. Shows himself off as one of the best coverage linebackers in the league, right? Not let alone just on the Chargers. I think that's just the path that it has to take for him to win it and win it over Thule and the yeah. other great edge rushers. Yeah, it's, we know it's in just stuff spots. in the stat sheet. Like, just every single category has, has got to look gaudy. In, in I mean, the top to of this draft award. class, when you're going the one through five or whatever you are for the defenders, like, there were some defenders we really liked at the top of this draft yeah. class. So, he obviously yeah. has to outplay all of those guys. But, like, it's been a while since the Chargers felt good about their middle linebacker position, right, and felt like it yeah. was set up. I mean – because you're right, we didn't have him four years playing at that level. We didn't no. see Drew Tranquil playing at that level for four years, right? No. This is a dude who's showing you he has what it takes year one, and I think the impact of that would be felt this year immediately, you know, yeah. especially because you don't, you don't need an injury, so you could still have Joey Bosa and, you know, Khalil Mack on the field with this happening, obviously. Right. But the long-term impact, I think, works out well, too, because that's, you know, another position where the certainty as far as contracts isn't really clear at this point. It is not. Not at all. I mean, you have Eric Eric Hendricks on a two-year contract, which is more like a, a, a one-year deal. A two-year that could be a one-year. Right. Yeah. A one-year that has a ripcord built into it. And then you have Kenneth Murray, which the Chargers opted not to pick up his fifth-year option. So, obviously, I mean, they're in prove-it mode. And so they have no commitments to either one of those players, really, after this one season. So if you have a guy at the middle linebacker position that comes in and shows out and shows that he's one of the best in the NFL, obviously you're going to be looking and feeling very, very good about that position group and and the prospects of what that could look like long term. And I think that is honestly the plan, right? He was brought in to be the guy that's going to eventually be in the middle of your defense for many years, hopefully. Sure. I mean, that's the thing is he's in the long-term plan. We just don't know what the impact he's going to have on that yeah. long-term plan is, right? Like, you get a, someone else you can build around on this defense, right. right? Yeah. You get a new stalwart for the middle and the center of your defense. You know, both of the last two winners of this position at middle linebacker, you know what else they were? All pros, right? All so, pros. like, if you're winning this yeah. as a rookie, you're going to potentially be an all-pro type of player, a Fred Warner level of player, right, or a Shaquille Leonard level of player, whatever you want it to be, Luke Keekley, yeah. like all those dudes are just bowling out. If he goes Monsters. and wins defensive yeah. rookie of the year, he's going to have to have an insane, insane year. And I think this year helps improve the run defense because it doesn't feel like you can win this award without having that be part of it, right? And we know he's a yeah. good tackler. Sure. And we know that this is the hardest position group to win yeah. this, right, out of all the guys, all positions we're talking about on yeah. the show. But I think it helps improve the run defense. He becomes the best Chargers coverage linebacker in forever, right? Maybe yeah, since, since like, like Donnie, Donnie Edwards. Edwards. Yeah, yeah, they're thinking the same thing on that. Yep. But yep. it also just fixes a problem position that you've had for years. Yeah, like, for a very long time. Yeah. At least since Kenneth Murray's gotten there, right? Like Denzel Perriman, even when Denzel Perriman, as much as we like to reflect back, like sure. he was not what he needed to be the first few years as far as being no. on the field and being a great player like that. He came yeah, around and he's a very, very solid player. Yeah, But, like, we're talking about a dude doing it in year one and, and fixing that position and having him line up most yeah. likely next to Eric Hendricks. And I think, really, that glue would really, I think, help take the Chargers' defense to the next level, maybe even more than Thule if he had that year, right? Because yeah. if Thule has that year, he's probably replacing someone you already hope are, is going to be great. Yeah, Like, I'm not expecting greatness from Kenneth Murray this year. I'm hoping for improvement. Yes. This would be greatness. That's what we greatness. would be seeing from Dayon Henley. Yeah. And, and you know, it's very, very unlikely, but like if he gets 75% of the numbers we put up, right? If he gets 60% of the numbers, yeah, you're feeling we, really we have good. Him, yeah. You feel like you have that guy going forward, and I'm very, very excited to see it. But thank you to Bolter, guys. That was a great question that needed a whole show. 
to fill. But make sure you guys are back here for today's show. This is the last week of five shows a week. And we plan on giving you guys five this week, even though June starts on Thursday. We'll let you know if anything changes from that. But we do have a big interview planned for tomorrow's show. We won't get too carried away with it, but that's what we have for you, as well as Fan Meal Friday on Friday, where you guys can hit us up on Twitter at LockdownLAC or individually for me at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogmeyer at DrotalkSD and get your questions in there. You can also call into the voicemail line at 323-524-7924 and get your voicemail in there. Thank you guys, as always, for checking out today's show. To make sure you don't miss tomorrow's show, go follow or subscribe for free on YouTube and listen wherever you get your podcast from. And you can also find the show every day on our social media as well as at Locked On Chargers on Instagram and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. But make sure you guys are here tomorrow, not only to see these really cool new graphics that we have, but also, David, to see hopefully a very special guest end up on tomorrow's show. So you guys are not going to want to miss it. And we'll talk to you then. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.